gardens have always been like a huge part of my life. It's what I feel like I've just been drawn to. Like I don't necessarily think there's like some like thing that I can put my finger on, but it's just where I feel most myself. It gets me out of my head. It gets me out of like the stresses of life. I'm Hattie Malloy and I'm a floral artist. I think a floral artist goes beyond, I guess, like the typical floristry um, that we've we're seeing like lots of fruits, lots of vegetables. So it's not, I guess, also just limited to flowers. When you start to push the boundaries, I think if you're like starting to do like larger scale, like installations with materials also that maybe aren't just flowers, I think that's when it starts to kind of push that barrier for me at least. These are some amazing garden roses that a friend luckily enough let me cut from her bush and then I've also just paired them with some birds of paradise which people wouldn't maybe think that roses and birds of paradise go together but it's about more so like the movement and the shape that you create. The biggest challenge is making sure that it's balanced um, and that it stays upright as well because you do have quite a lot of weight and you've got things that are very prickly so to manoeuvre them and to get it all kind of right and harmonious is a skill. I was born in Black Rock and I grew up around that area. And then we moved down the morning to Peninsula when I was quite young. When I would go to these like cliff top walks down in Portsea and when it was freesia season and all I would do was pick bouquets upon bouquets upon bouquets of free, like posies of freesias. It's just all I wanted to do and spending a lot of time in my grandma's garden, like I would make posies for my teachers, I would take them to school, like I was just, it's just what I wanted to be around. My grandma would also take me to the local forest and I would sit there in awe and be like, oh my God, people get to do this for a job, you know? So I think um, it was like always like what I kind of thought I would do. I was working for other florists and then I was just kind of doing my own thing on the side and posting on Instagram. And it was not necessarily to start a business. I was actually very scared to start a business, but I guess because I was doing something new that wasn't really around, people kind of found my work and gravitated towards it, then all of a sudden took off really quickly. I was diagnosed with a functional neurological disorder in July 2021. And so just happened all of a sudden, one day I had a migraine and then the next day I was unable to walk, talk, and I was just convulsing. And so I lost all of my ability to send like those automatic signals from my brain to my body to be able to do everything <laughs> that I used to do. So I've had a long road of learning how to walk again, how to talk again, how to do a lot of life skills again, and I'm still trying to figure out how to, I guess, do that. <laughs> so FND is pretty unknown condition as well and I feel like it's quite a stigmatised condition. It does affect greatly women, like 80% now studies are saying, and it's something that they don't understand, unfortunately. It's had a huge impact on my life and my work and, I mean, everything. I don't have independence in the sense that I can't leave my house without someone, I can't do most of my household tasks or things like that. I can't drive. I, I use a walking stick when I'm walking or for longer periods, I'm in a wheelchair. This is my little balcony garden here in East Melbourne that I like to grow as many things on as possible. I have a lot of things, especially because I don't have access to going to the flower market a lot and things like that. I try and grow things that I can snip and then I can make little arrangements with. I feel really grounded and I guess just immersed when I'm in this space, um, especially when sometimes I can't get out of the house and I can't, you know, go out. At least I get to connect with nature here and feel like I'm a part of the outside world. So it's really important for me. And that's why I think I've kind of made it quite immersive so it kind of hugs you almost. 
I guess I'm growing generally for things that I can use, that I use in my arrangements. Some sweet peas growing. I've also been able to grow a Sturt Desert pea out here that flowered, which was my greatest gardening achievement to date. And then I also, I guess I grow herbs and things like that as well that I like to have for cooking and things like that. So everything has a practical use. <laughs> It always kind of amazes me what I can come up with out of that space. And usually it is kind of like some quite common things like pansies, violets, asturtium. So they're all really easy to grow. Some of these delicate flowers, like you can't buy at the flower market because they are so small and dainty. When I start off an arrangement, I usually try and think about kind of the movement of it. So I guess like its highest point and then the, I call them just like the darty bits. And I guess where also like the negative space is gonna kind of lie and then a focal point, which is always important and just always a bit of interest. I feel like with colour, I just tend to make whatever works and somehow it comes together. It'll be nice when the Japanese maple comes. My darling mother Louise. I feel so lucky, one, that we get along so well because she's been my full-time carer for the past two and a half years. And she does everything for me. She's here nine o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock at night, helping me, still, you know, driving me around to jobs, to appointments. So yeah, I'd be lost without her. So I've had to make you know, huge adjustments, but I still have been determined to still work throughout this. I think that sometimes it's easy when everything stops working to just like focus on everything that isn't working. And my creative, I guess, um, practice has given me something to focus on that is still working because I'm still creative. I still have ideas. I can still make those ideas come to life. I just have to do it in a different way now. This is my home studio that I photograph a lot of my work in, and it's just kind of my play space as well. I take photos of my arrangements and, you know, they end up, I guess, on social media, but then I also, you know, make a calendar at the end of each year out of it and sell prints on my um, website also. I think that a lot of the beauty comes from using, like, interesting things that you wouldn't, I guess, normally pair with flowers. So I love corn, like, it's just so, incredible the um the colors and the texture and everything and then with the humble radish and then with lily of the valley which is one of the most gorgeous flowers and scents that you can get if i actually think that it, it's maybe not going to go together i think that's i'm onto the right thing if that makes sense because i think pairing things with what you don't maybe traditionally think of going together and all you can do is have a play and see if it works like i started out this and i even was like oh Maybe this isn't going to work, but then as you go along, you start to see, I guess, how things can intertwine together. I think that, like, my view on the world is that I do like to change, like, I guess, the context of how you perceive things. I like having that, like, oh, what is that? Or, oh, how did that, how did she do that? Or how is that created? I don't need to kind of recreate nature because nature does a great job. I need to put my own spin on it. 